Hello and welcome to my next video on enthalpy. This is AS enthalpy, not A2 enthalpy. So enthalpy, which we use the symbol H for, is the heat content stored in a chemical system. And the chemical system is the reactant and the products, and the surroundings, which are not the chemical system, is what we count as everything else which isn't the um, reactants or products. Now, the important thing about energy is that it is always conserved. Energy can never be created or destroyed, it's only transferred. So, if you lose heat from a chemical system, the surroundings gain the heat. If, you, um, if the chemical system gains heat, heat is lost from the surroundings. And if you lose heat from the surroundings, it means you get a decrease in temperature. Delta H which is that little triangle next to the H, is what we call enthalpy change, which is when you get a change in the heat content of a system. Now, there are two types of reaction. There are exothermic and endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions are ones where heat is given off. So you lose heat from the system, which means since you're losing heat from that system, the delta H decreases. Enthalpy has decreased from the system, and the heat has been given out to the surroundings. Endothermic reaction is the opposite. Energy is taken in, heat is gained to the system, which means that overall the temperature has increased, well, the enthalpy has increased in the system, so it's plus VE, and the surroundings obviously lose the heat and lose the temperature. Now, there are some examples on page 186, 187 of exothermic and endothermic reactions. I'm not going to go through them, but, for example, exothermic combustion. Anything with combustion will always give off heat, things like that. Um, and thermal decomposition usually takes in heat. So, but uh, yeah, you can look at them for yourselves. I don't think you need to know any of them. Enthalpy profile diagrams. Now, this is a diagram for a reaction to compare the enthalpy for the reactants with the enthalpy of the products. Now, we'll start off with the exothermic one. And in this, if you look on the y axis, you have enthalpy. And we know that enthalpy for the um, you know, the products and reactants will decrease overall during the reaction. So the reactants will have a higher enthalpy than the products. And, well, that's what ER and PR. So reactants have a higher enthalpy than the products as the reaction progresses. And we can see this because if you draw a downwards facing arrow from reactants to products, you see delta H decreases. And that's important. Make sure you get the arrowheads on, on the right way. But the other thing is, all reactions require something called activation energy, which is EA. And activation energy is the minimum energy required to start a reaction by breaking the bonds. All reactions have to start by bonds being broken. Because bonds are broken and bonds are made. Bond breaking requires energy put in, which means it is an endothermic process, which means immediately you'll gain energy to the system. So you need to give energy to the system. So that's why the red line, you can see it increases to a point, but then as the products are made, when bonds are made, they give out energy, they are exothermic. So here we can see, for the activation energy, energy is taken in, it's endothermic, and then as the bonds are made, energy is given out. And the activation energy is the energy from the resting state of the reactants to the top of that kind of hill. Now, endothermic is basically the opposite. Reactants start at a lower enthalpy level than the products because energy is taken in. So delta H goes up, it increases. But the important thing is activate you suddenly put in activation energy. But this time it's it's still going to go higher than the products. If it doesn't go higher than the products then it doesn't work. So activation energy, you gain that and it decreases but it decreases to a point that is higher than the reactants. So the products has got more enthalpy than the reactants. So you can see delta H increases. Definitions. You need to know a few definitions. Enthalpy change of combustion. These are in the books, so you can read them, but I'll read them out anyway. Is the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of the substance reacts completely with oxygen under standard conditions. So that is if you um, completely combusted, you know, an alkene or an alkane or something like that. Enthalpy change of formation of a compound is the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements in their standard states. Enthalpy change of reactants 
Is the enthalpy change that accompanies a reaction in the molar quantities expressed in the chemical reaction under standard conditions? Blah. Now that kind of underground symbol, the circle with a line through it, means standard conditions, which are 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius, 1 atm, which is 1 atmosphere, or 100, or 100 kilopascals, I say um, atmosphere, 1 mol per dm cubed, which is the concentration. Standard states mean the state they're naturally in. So um, something like calcium would be as naturally a solid when uh, chlorine is naturally a gas. Right, the equations. We will go into all of these a little bit more. But we have Q equals MC delta T. Delta H equals Q over N. Every change of combustion equals reactants minus products. Every change of formation equals every change of products minus reactants. And every change of bond enthalpy equals enthalpy change of bonds um, broken minus the enthalpy change of bonds made. Now we'll explain what some of the symbols mean a little bit later. One thing I will say now is that many of you um, for enthalpy will have learnt uh, of Hess's law and Hess's cycles. Um, I, and I'm sure that's probably why many of you asked for the video um, to go through that. I say now I will not be going through that. I will not be doing any work on Hess's cycle because I do not know how to. But you ne you don't need it. The three equations you've seen here for the delta HC, delta HF and delta HBE will always work. You do not need Hess's cycle ever. I, d I don't know why they teach it but you do not need it. So the first one, Q equals MC delta T. Q is the heat exchanged. M is the mass of the uh, surroundings involved in the heat exchange, the liquid, usually. Uh, C is specific heat capacity. Now that is the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degrees Celsius. And for um, water, which is what you will always use, you'll always be given this value, it's 4.18 um, joules per gram, I believe it's in. Uh, on joules per gram per Kelvin, sorry and delta T which is a change in temperature. Now you can't generally directly calculate the enthalpy change so but one thing you can work out is the mass and the um, change in temperature so you can work out Q which then if you divide Q by the moles will give you the enthalpy change because Q is measured in joules delta H is measured in kilojoules per mole so if you divide the joules by the mole then divide by a thousand to get kilojoules per mole you've got the enthalpy so I'm just going to go through an example on page 193 of the OCR textbook, question 1. So that's 0 0.327 grams of zinc powder was added to 55 centimetres cubed of aqueous copper sulphate at 22.8 degrees. The temperature rose to 32.3 degrees and the aqueous copper to sulphate is in excess. So we also have an equation which is zinc plus copper sulphate becomes zinc sulphate plus copper. It's a one-to-one -one ratio of all the um, substances. So, first thing, Q equals M, mass. We have that 55 centimetres cubed because it's of the surroundings, so that the liquid. C, we know is 4.18. And then temperature. Now, 22.8 is a starting, and it increases to 32.3. Now, we already know that the temperature has increased, so energy has been given off, so there's an exothermic reaction, so delta H will be negative. Now, important thing, delta H has a sign, so you always have to put positive or negative. Q doesn't. It has no sign. So, 55 times 4.18 times 9.5 equals 2,184.05 joules. Now, moles of zinc, we've been told the uh, mass is 0 0.327. And the molar mass of zinc is 65.4 so 0 0.327 divided by 65.4 equals 5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles so we got the moles we got q q divided by moles which is 2184.05 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 3 equals minus 436810 joules per mole divided by 1000 because it's generally in kilojoules minus 436.81 kilojoules per mole and there you go um now some things to mention the mass is of the surroundings as we said so if you see question 2 it says 25 cm cubed was added with 25 cm cubed so the mass is 50 now the moles is the 
um, moles of stuff that is being heated. So, uh, as you can see in the example, they say an excess of magnesium is added to this of copper sulfate. They work out the moles of copper sulfate that reacted, and since it's a one to one, we can use the moles of copper sulfate in this case. Copper sulfate is the thing that's being heated, and yeah. I hope that makes sense, that example. Uh, basically, it's just mass, work out that is generally the liquid, all liquids added together. C is always 4.18, and I'll give you that. Delta T is a change in temperature. If it goes up, it's exothermic, so not minus sign. If it goes down, it's endothermic, so a plus sign. Work out the moles, divide Q by the moles. Combustion. Now, empty change of combustion always gives off heat, so it's always negative. And the way you're going to remember this is that n so delta hc combustion equals the sum of the enthalpies of the reactants of the equation minus the sum of the enthalpy of the products and the way you remember this is that enthalpy is crap c for combustion r reactants p products crap and so if you just remember that c goes r then p you'll remember it forever so on page 199 question 1a you have the equation 4C plus 5H2 becomes C4H10, and you've been given some enthalpy changes of combustion. Delta HC equals, now, the uh, enthalpy change of combustion of carbon, one carbon, is minus 394. We have four carbons, so we times it by four. Then you add that with um, five minus 286, because that's hydrogen, so we've got the reactants, carbon and hydrogen. Add those together to sum, of the enthalpy changes of the reactants and then take that away from just just one minus 200 2877 now since these are minus and a minus you add them so overall you get minus 129 kilojoules per mole so yeah just remember the sum of the enthalpy changes of reactants minus the sum of the enthalpy changes of products if there is a coefficient in front of the element in the equation the substance in the equation so 4 c you times the enthalpy change given by 4 well yeah just do it like that formation usually minus but it can be positive positive. and just remember this is the opposite of combustion so combustion crap combustion equals reactants are minus products now formation is the opposite, it's products minus reactants. So here, question, page 201, question 1b. If you're given the equation, 4 ammonia plus 5 oxygen becomes 4 nitrogen oxide plus 6 water. Now, one thing to state about formation, since formation is the um, enthalpy change when an um, a substance is made from its constituent elements in their standard state, oxygen is an element. You cannot make, well, if you make element, from its elements, nothing has changed. It's an element from its elements. So the enthalpy change of oxygen of any compound which is just a pure element, so O2, H2, N2, uh, diamond, which is you know many carbons, all of them, that is just zero. So you don't count it. So products, 4 times NO, which is 90, plus 6H2O, which is minus 286, add them together, minus 4NH3, which is minus 46. So overall, we get minus 1,172 kilojoules per mole. Again, just practice. Just remember, crap, combustion is reactants minus products. Formation is the opposite, so products minus reactants. And finally, bond enthalpy. Now, as we said earlier, breaking bonds needs energy put into it, so it is endothermic to break a bond. But then when it makes bonds, energy is given out, so it is exothermic. Now, bond enthalpies is the enthalpy change which takes place when breaking by homolytic fission one mole of a given bond in the molecules of a gaseous species. So basically um, when you break you break homolytic fission is when one electron out of the pair goes to each atom in the bond. So that's what bond enthalpy is, the enthalpy change when you break one mole of a given bond in a particular in molecules of a particular gaseous species so that's a bit gaseous but different bonds will have different depending on where they are will have different bond enthalpies so for example an h2h bond can only occur in 
H2 hydrogen. So that has one particular bond enthalpy. But different molecules such as carbon to carbon or carbon to H um, will are found in many different sorts of molecules. So carbon to carbon can be found in ethane, propane, butane, pentane, etc. And each of them will change the strength of that bond. So the average bond enthalpy is the is um, the average enthalpy change that takes place when breaking by homolytic fission one mole of a given type of bond in the molecules of gaseous species. So CH, um, C, uh, C to O, C to C, all these ones um, will have an average bond enthalpy because they can be found in more than one molecule. So that bond can be different strengths in different molecules. That's basically what it means. Now. What makes the reaction exothermic or endothermic? Because we said that breaking bonds is endothermic, making bonds is exothermic. Now, in an exothermic reaction, the bonds that are formed are stronger than the bonds that are broken. So that means if they are stronger when they are formed, they release more energy than they take it, took in to break. In an endothermic reaction, the bonds that are formed are weaker than the bonds that were broken. So more more energy was taken in to break the bonds than was given out when they were made. So that's what makes in something exothermic or endothermic. So bond enthalpy is the same as um, combustion. Combustion is the normal one. Reactants minus products are crap. So it's bonds broken minus bonds made. Now the bonds broken are the ones the bonds you have in the um, reactants. The bonds made are the ones that are made in the products. So it's reactants minus products but they're bonds. So another example, page 197, question 2C. Now when doing this, I haven't done it here, but it's always very useful to draw the molecule so you can see the number of bonds. So we've got N2 plus 3H2 becomes 2NH3. Now N2 is nitrogen, that contains one N to N triple bond, and we've been given that as a 945 kilojoules per mole, so we've got that. H2 is just one H to H single bond but there are three of them because there's three H2 molecules so it's three times um, 436 minus 2 NH3 so we've got two molecules but NH3 if you know how the molecule looks it has three NH bonds so you have N to an H to an H to an H and a lone pair so it's three times the bond enthalpy which is 391 so three times 391 but two molecules so it's two times 3 times 391. So essentially it is, there are three NH bonds, but there are two molecules, so it's 2 times 3, and overall that equals minus 93 kilojoules per mole. So I hope that all makes sense. If any of the examples haven't, please email me or leave a comment. Uh, but basically, just remember, combustion, reactant minus products, formation is products minus reactants, bond enthalpy is reactant minus products. Make sure however many times the molecule appears, you times it by that many, the enthalpy by that many times. And with bond enthalpy, the number of times the bond appears and the molecule appears, you times it by that number of times. So in conclusion, you need to know enthalpy, you need to know the difference between endothermic and exothermic reactions. You need to be able to draw enthalpy profile diagrams for endothermic and exothermic reactions. And know the enthalpy change of combustion, formation and bond enthalpy. So thank you for watching and goodbye.